Good morning, you're right. Um, it is Wednesday and today we are doing some gorgeous Tree of Life gemstone pendants. Um, now you may have done these before. Um, Kitty has her own way of doing them. I've got my own way of doing them as well. And there's lots of different methods to achieve some really, really pretty looks. Um, a lot of people will start with the branches. I like to work from the roots. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how I do them. Um, and they, there are just so many lovely gemstones to choose from. Um, so I'm going to say a quick good morning to you all soon. So if you're here, give me a little hello. Give me a little wave. Let me know what the weather's like where you are. It's been torrentially raining here uh, yesterday. I was trying to do some uh, little bits of recording and the wind and the rain was just hammering my window outside. Um, so yeah, that's not great. This morning we woke up to quite a little bit of flooding outside. Um, it wasn't inside, so that's the main thing, but the water was starting to, to pool on the driveway. So uh, it's a day for wellies and a day for staying in. So I hope you're okay. Good morning to Lucy. Good morning to Charlotte. Good morning to Camille. Thank you for giving me a little wave. Camille, how you doing? Good morning to Carol. Um, she says, good morning to Natalie and our beading family. Sunny but cold here in Brixham. It's just dull, dull and rainy. Um, but it's not dull inside. It's full of sparkle again for you this morning. Um, it's still raining in Hawaii, says Charlotte. Good morning to Anne. She's wishing everybody a good morning. Good morning to Judith. She says, good morning, Natalie and everybody. Um, cold, dry at the moment, but yesterday we had rain. And oh, is that a snowflake or is it a frost? A snowflake, isn't it, Judith? Go on, get me excited. <laughs> good morning to Janet. How are you, my love? She says, Good morning, everybody. And she waves. She says, It's chilly morning here in Glasgow. Good morning to Diana. Uh, good morning to Ruth. And oh, Ellie isn't far away from me at all. She says, It's raining in Ormskirk in the Lanks. Good morning. So, um, good morning, Lisa, as well. Good morning, Natalie, and all you lovely beaders. It's cold and sunny in Plymouth. So the weather's chilly, um, stay in, wrap up. I am expecting um, Father Christmas's helper with a few parcels today that might knock on my door. So if it comes in the live, I do apologise, but I have to get some Christmas shopping sorted um, and, and lots of goodies arriving too. So we'll, we'll see, it might not happen. Um, it'll probably happen later when I've gone out. I've got to um, take my mum on a little errand. So I'm hoping that they come beforehand. Good morning to Lisa. Good morning to Celia. She says it's wet and windy in Bolton. Good morning to Lindsay. She's giving us a little wave. Hi, Lindsay. Um, good morning to uh, Gwen. She's also saying good morning to everybody. Um, good morning to Joanne. Good morning to Esther. Esther says it's wet and dull here in Preston. Um, yeah, weather's rubbish. Good morning to Rachel. She says, good morning, everybody. The weather's absolutely horrible. Uh, rain for the day, windy in South Yorkshire. Um, ah, hello, Kim. She says, morning, Natalie. Lovely to see you. Got the day off. Excited to do this treat this time. Got two kits and haven't got round to doing them yet. Um, the kits will be the same as what you got last time. There may be a few new gemstone choices in there, though, for you, um, which is lovely. Um, so I'll show you them on the website very shortly. Good morning to Mary. Good morning to Debbie. Um, good morning to Sheila. Uh, good morning to Pamela. Good morning to Angela. We've got all sorts of you in. Everybody's here, I think, this morning. Mixing a few regular faces, so they might join us a little bit later. Right, let me get down on the website for you. So we're going to go over to our favourite place in the world online, which is... Um, totallybeads.co.uk. Um, I'm ahead of myself already here, so I'm going to take you in to today's tutorial. So click on the video tutorial link or go down into the categories and you will see today is Tree of Life Pendants. So there's three different colour choices for you today and you can make five up in each kit. So let me just check that this is... Fresh, yeah, okay, so we're going 
for an absolute bargain price of $12.99 today. And in your kits, you're going to be able to make five different ones. So you can either choose whether you would like to have a rose gold, a gold or a silver, or if there's a particular gemstone that you like, have a little look in which category there is. So if you go into the gold kit, you get your large etched rings, which is what we're going to be um, wire wrapping onto today. You're also going to get um, five types of your gemstone chips and one large reel of wire. So your wire will match. So if you've got the gold, you get the gold wire. If you're getting the rose gold, you'll get the rose gold coloured wire and silver will be the silver wire. You're also going to get, look at all these. So in your gold kit, you're getting mookite, citrine, tiger eye, peridot and gold quartz. So there are so so, I mean, all those colours are beautiful against the gold. Um, but if you know, say, your favourite citrine, which is very good for attracting uh, wealth and prosperity, you might think that's what I would like. You might be a tiger eye lover. So you get the gold kit. So they're the colour choices in your gemstone chips for the gold. For the rose gold, you're getting tourmaline which i don't believe has been in this kit before you're also going to get a clear crystal so that'll be like your quartz you've got a light amethyst which is beautiful you're also getting cherry quartz and pink opal and the pink opal is stunning those colors are really going to go lovely against that um, rose gold as well so they're the colors in your rose gold mix you're still getting your wire you're still getting your large ring to um wire wrap around and lastly, but not leastly, in silver, which is what I'm going to be working with today, you're going to get your unikite, your smoky quartz, your labradorite, your fluorite, and your sodalite. And I think I'm going to be a little bit, a little bit sneaky today. So I'm going to do the silver, but I think I might mix up some of my chips because it's entirely up to you how you want to work these you might want to do it and just make it with the fluorite you might think actually i think the fluorite's gonna look really pretty with the labradorite which is my personal favorite um so you might want to mix them up that is entirely up to you so they are the beautiful beautiful bargains for you today um the wire that's included in your kit is your 0.3 so that's going to give it a really lovely delicate look and it's really easy to use as well and your chips are really small which also adds to that beautiful delicate look um your chips are all irregular shapes so they're all unique they've all got their own color in them and their own kind of shape which means it's going to give it a really lovely natural organic look which are perfect for Tria Lives. So very excited about that. Let me have a little look at some more of your comments. Good morning to Nicole. Lucy says, I've got the rose gold ones last time. First bit of wire work, I was so proud. I'm gonna show you how to make these really easy. Um, she's also sharing the link for us as well today. So thank you for that. Good morning to Jackie. Um, ah, now I thought that she said, refresh it because the price is different on mine. Let me do that for you then, because I thought it was slightly different in price as well. Let's go back onto the website. Let's go back to the beginning. Have we got more of a bargain than anticipated? Let's see. Drum roll. Hmm. It's still showing. I mean, for $12.99. That's an absolute bargain. Let me know if that's different. I have refreshed it. Keep refreshing. Well, they're looking to me that they are $12.99. I don't think you're going to be paying any more than that. Um, Simon's probably fuming at me now, isn't he? <laughs> um, Lucy is loving the kits. I am too. Um, so is Trish. She says, good morning, ladies. Mina's here. Hello. She says she brought the rose gold kit last year too. Um, 
Lucy, give yourself a reboot. Whichever is the cheaper price is probably what it's going to be. Um, I'm looking at it as $12.99. Either way, you're making five up with that. So that's amazing. Right, let me stop sharing the screen. Let's get back to you. Okay, so I'm going to take you down onto the mat. And I'm going to show you just some of the different designs that you can do. There you go. Look at all these beauties. So there's so many different ways that you can shape and make your tree. You can give it kind of like a, a bonsai look. You can have thicker um, branches and not roots. What's this bit called? Why? <laughs> Why is that word gone? I'm thinking bark. It's not bark. Trunk. There you go. Oh, I need a coffee this morning, don't I? Um, you can wrap them so um, your trunk is much thicker. I love the shape of this one. I think this may have been the one that Kitty did in the live um, when she did it last time. It's very, very pretty. Um, you can make different hearts and shapes if you want to amongst your branches. You could even plait them if you wanted to. I like to add little curly bits onto mine with the little bits of wire. I just think that looks a little bit pretty. Um, Lucy says, I love the little, everyone's shouting trunk at me now. <laughs> Carol says, could you make a bigger ring with wire as I would like to do one on a bigger frame? You most certainly can. I would suggest you get something, um, it doesn't have to be a mandrel. You could use anything you like, Carol, that's got that circumference. Use, um, I'd say probably a one mil wire. You want something that's going to be quite sturdy to hold that shape. And then you can work a bale onto that. You can do whatever you want with that. That's, that's definitely possible. This one I've done here. I did this a little while ago. If you'd have watched me on Sunday Beader, um, probably about a year ago, back in the day, I think I showed this off there. A little bit of fluff stuck to it there. This is just a bangle. So I had a bangle with a little bit of etching on it and I thought that would be lovely and I made a little swing. I will show you how to make a little swing as well. So that is a larger sized one. Um, if you're wearing it obviously as a pendant then these ones are perfect for that. I don't think you're going to want it much larger than this. They also make really lovely sun catches. I know Kitty's got lots in her house and she's framed them and they look beautiful together in a frame. Um, so there is lots of different things that you can do with these and whatever it is you do, it will be unique to you. So even if you're following my method of doing this and you repeat that process, everyone will be slightly different work with the wire. Um, if the wire wants to go a certain way, go with it. It's going to give it a really gorgeous, organic, natural look. Um, no tree is the same. No leaf is the same. No gemstone is the same. So these are all going to be perfectly unique and different. Um, Dorothy says, today, I got my 12 days, um, so you must be very excited, Dorothy. Charlotte's saying she's loving them. They are really pretty, aren't they? Um, Mina's still waiting eagerly for her post to arrive. Oh, and Lucy agrees she put hers in a frame like Kitty did. I mean, sometimes you just, you know, these are so lovely, and obviously you're getting five in your kit, so you're going to want to make all five up. You might not want to give any of them away. You might want to keep them all yourself and you might not want to wear them as pendants. You can pop a little jump ring um, onto these and you can have them as a pendant or you can hang them or you can box them, whatever it is that you'd like to do. They look lovely in a frame. So let's get started. Let's move the beauties out of the way and I will show you how I do mine. So you're going to start with your little frame in what whichever colour choice you've got. It's really nice and sturdy. It's not going to change its shape as you're working that wire. Um, it's perfect for this project. 
And I'm going to cut the way I do it is I like to wrap mine all the way. You don't have to. I've done many before where I haven't. Um, so this one, for example, that I've done, I haven't wrapped the whole frame. I've just wrapped the little part where the branches are. These are so lovely. You, you can leave them bare. That, that's entirely up to you. So if you want to, you can just wrap on where the roots are and where the branches are. But I quite like to wrap mine. So what I would do is I would take a piece of wire and you don't have to cut your wire too long because you're not going to see where you attach those next pieces of wire. It's going to look continuous. So you don't have to worry about using a really long strand and getting tangled. So what I tend to do is I hold my wire underneath, leaving myself a little tail, and I would literally just start wrapping that around. And then what you can do, you can use your pliers or your fingers just to push those up together. And you can work that tail off as well. All you need to make sure you're doing to make this nice and neat is that each time you wrap the wire around, your next coil isn't sitting on top of the wire you've just wrapped. It's just going next to it. So I'm just bringing that through the hoop. So as I say, it's probably easier to do it with smaller parts of the wire in little sections because you haven't got to, to pull a big length through the middle. But what I will do is I'll show you if I was to do and to add an extra one so you know you can't see it. So then what I would do when I come to the end of the wire is I would make sure it was fully tucked in so I would use my pliers and I'd try and get it to finish underneath. So when I pinch that in, there'll be no sharp parts on the outside. It's not gonna catch on anything. So the wire is finishing underneath. I'm gonna trim that and show you how it'll look if I was to add an extra bit on. So you can tuck that in so I'm finishing that wire on the underneath. You can close it down together to press them in. You can also use your pliers just to give that a little squish and that will make that steady around the frame. And then if you were to add your other bit, you'd do exactly the same. So I would start Wrapping my next piece. Tend to just push it in with my fingers. Let's give that a little trim off. And tuck this back in. And as I say, you don't have to wrap the frame. This is just what I do. But when you push that up together, it's gonna look like you've got one long continuous wrap. You're not gonna see where one starts and one finishes. Can you see that? Good morning, Edward, hope you're okay. Everyone's just excited about um, their 12 days, I think. Good morning, Pauline. Okay, so what I would do is I would wrap all of my frame and I would leave a section at the bottom here, which is where I'm going to start adding my roots. So when I add my roots in, it will look continuous. And here's one I've made earlier because I thought you don't want to sit and watch me wrapping this round and round and round. So I would take my wire, I'm going to wrap it all the way until I'm happy with the section that I've got left for my roots. I would trim off and I'm going to try and trim it so it sits on the inside. And then I would tuck that in.
and if you want you can use your pliers or your nylon coated pliers and just press that very gently all the way round just to flatten it out. So I wrapped my frame and it's now looking like this. Lucy says that's very neat wrapping. I'll be honest Lucy I did it quite quickly last night while watching a certain program in a certain castle with certain trials. <laughs> it didn't take me very long to do. Just want to make sure that that's tucked in properly. Don't want any little sharp bits. Okay, so then I would start from my roots. As I say, there's lots of different ways to do this. Some people like to start from the branches and work their way down. I tend to do my roots and work my way up. Now you can do these where you are just wrapping it on and doing it one um, little root individually, but I like to have more of a gathered look with mine. So I will cut a few strands of wire Again, it completely depends on the length. I'll always probably cut more than I need. I think these are probably about 12 inches. So what's that, about 30 centimeters? You can cut anything from 20. It, these aren't very large, so you're not gonna use them all. Um, but again, I'd rather have more than have less. So all I'm doing there is I'm bringing my ends up together so I can find the middle part. And I'm gonna, position it in the middle. I'm going to hold it with one finger and I'm going to start wrapping it round just a couple of times. Again, I want my wraps to sit next to each other, nice and flush. I'm bringing that one up and round as well. I'm going to give it a little pinch together with my nails. You can use your tools if you want. I know Jo, if she's watching, will be shouting at me because apparently your nails are jewels, not tools. But as you can see, Jo, I use mine for all sorts. So I'm bringing those wires back up and then I'm just sliding that along so it meets where our last wrap was. And then giving these a little pinch together, just going to give it a little twist. Doesn't have to be much of a twist, just a little twist. And then I'm gonna add on another one. So again, I'm bringing those ends of the wire together, finding my center, popping that through, giving it a little twist round. Now, if you want your roots to be more um, opened out, all you'd need to do is just a few more coils on either side. So that's why I like to use quite a long length. Obviously I'm folding it over, but if I'm using um, about 12 inches, then if I want to, I've got enough to make that coil around the bottom much longer or wider. Bringing them back up through the middle, sliding that across. And if you want to, you can pinch these together and give that a little twist as well. So those roots will now join. And all I'm gonna do is continue that to fill this space. Now, the more you put on in terms of your roots, the thicker your trunk is going to be and the more branches you're going to have. So bear that in mind, depending on your design. As I say, the more you do these, the more you'll find you'll prefer different looks. You might want to experiment with how you're doing your branches. So just do whatever works best for you. Pinching them together a little bit. Wrapping that round. 
bringing it through and I tend to wrap over this side when I attach it on and then I'll give it a push up and a slide over to the next one and that just gives me a little bit more working space. I'm missing all these comments. You're all just eager about your 12 days, aren't you? Don't worry, it's all in hand. You've got a little while yet to get it. Um, I'm sure as soon as it's ordered, those in the warehouse have put it together and dispatched it for you. But obviously, everybody's post works slightly different around the country at the moment, doesn't it? Um, was it Mina last live so what last monday was saying things that she orders um later so she might order something on the thursday and end up getting it on the friday but something maybe that she's ordered on the monday still hasn't come so i'm just wrapping those round bringing them back up towards the top giving them a little twist together and depending on where you twist them together obviously if you want to open it out a little bit more just pinch a little bit higher up that wire slide that over so I've only got a little bit more of a gap to do so I think I'm probably going to need a couple more wires Lucy says, when I did my trees, I think I started at the top of the trees, not the trunk. Nice to see it done differently. There are so many different ways that you can do this to get the same um, similar looks and similar designs. As I say, all of them are going to look completely unique and different anyway. It's just whatever method works for you. Um, I think I'd started playing around with Tree of Life designs before Kitty did the tutorial. So the way I I kind of put it together was slightly different. But it's whatever you find you prefer to do. I'm gonna bring these two little root systems together and give them a little pinch. So I've got four wires there going together. I'm just gonna bring that in. Right, let's cut another piece. Good morning, Sandra. How are you doing? So, which is your favourite colourway? For me, I always love the rose gold wire, but you know i'll be i'll be working off which gemstone i think i prefer um the gemstones that are picked in your in in each of the colorway kits really do look lovely with that particular wire just cross them over a little bit so let me get on fiddly so again this doesn't have to be too neat um it's a really nice beginner project for wire work. I mean, I look back at some of my, my first makes and I'd say Tree Lives were probably some of the first things I did. Um, and the bales on them are, are shocking. I'm keeping it just for me so I can look back and think how much I've progressed. Um, but you don't have to worry about bales with these because it's already on the ring for you just attaching a little jump ring is um is sufficient enough just going to give that a little push down to make sure that that looks nice and neat but as i say you don't have to be um concerned about you know how neat this is because it's it's got that natural natural look to it just going to move that over and get that back into position right 
Let's check. Can I fit another one in between? If I move that coil up, I can. So I think I'll probably only need one more. I might be slightly running over today. Hopefully we'll, um, we'll make progress. And I'll, I'll try not to, to chit chat too much and focus on what I'm doing. But can you imagine if you'd have just sat and watched me wrap the frame? That would have probably took us a good 20 minutes. So I'm just going to attach this last one. Just fill in that space. So bring in my wire around the frame to fill in any of those little gaps. think that should do and give them a little twist together. I tend to turn my frame round but you can just twist the wire. So as you can see there, there aren't any spaces and then all I'm going to do is with these wires that are now running up the middle, I'm going to pinch them together to where I want my roots to finish and my trunk to start. So I'm giving it a little pinch and I'm just going to twist them all together. Actually going to bring it over a little bit because I'd like to add some, I don't know, a little bit of shape onto my tree. So I think I'll probably want it coming up in this direction and then if there's time I can add a little swing onto it. So I've just positioned them together. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my round nose pliers. Or your other pliers, it doesn't matter. All I'm going to do is just put some little twists. by very gently. Just add in a little bit of shape. So these aren't running perfectly straight. I want to kind of move out parts of my root system. Now I'm not doing that with too much force, don't want to snap any wires, but I'm just going to give some a little, little twist to open them out until I'm happy with it. And also, because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, just going to tuck in and flatten some of those coils at the bottom. There you go, that looks better. And now is, is the fun part. So now you get to open these out and have a little think about how you want your branches to be positioned. So I'm going to take the wires and I'm going to separate them away from each other. And I think I'm going to start working with maybe three branches and then split them off a bit more. So all I'm going to do is take the ones I've just separated and I'm going to give them a twist on their own. So that's going to be one of my branches. I'm going to twist these ones together and then I'm going to twist these ones together. So I've now got three branches and then I can open these up again and I can make more branches coming off that if I want to or I can open them up and start adding the gemstones on which is what I'm going to do here so I'm going to keep them together for now. So I'm going to split off some more so all I'm doing is just finishing a twist in certain places. I think that might look nice if that goes up. And I'm just going to start playing around with how I would like my branches to go and start adding the gemstones. So I'm going to start adding the fluorite gemstones. As I say, if I put some of these down, fluorite's a beautiful gemstone. 
because you get so many different colors in there. You get in whites, you get in blues, you get in green tones, you get in pinks. So mine's gonna look like a nice little um, spring-like tree maybe. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding on my chips so they'll all have a little hole running through them. I'm gonna find, I've got little shaky hands today. I don't know why. I haven't put my heat on, maybe I'm cold. I haven't had enough coffee, maybe that's why. <laughs> so I'm gonna add those chips on and I'm gonna add the chips up to the point where this wire meets the outside of the frame. So I think it's meeting it about there. And all I'm gonna do is bring my wire around the frame and wrap it around three times just to secure it. And you won't probably really see where this branch is meeting and attaching itself to the frame because we've already wire wrapped that. So when I wrapped it a couple of times, I'm gonna then give it a little trim. I'm trimming it quite close up and then I'm gonna tuck it in, make sure that wire is nice and tucked in and I'm gonna try and tuck it on the inside of my frame. So when I run my finger across that, there's nothing sharp and nothing sticking out. <laughs> Mina says to Lucy, I've told Simon not to send any pink kits in your 12 days of Christmas. Why are you teasing each other, you two? For those of you that don't know, and I'm sure you do, Lucy's obsessed with pink. <laughs> so what colour kit are you going to get if you get the trees? Lucy, you're going to get the rose gold colour and then all of your um, your makes can be pinkish tones then. So again, adding the chips up to where I would like that branch to sit so it meets the end of the frame. Bringing that wire round, wrapping it once, twice and three times to secure. And I like to, um, I mean, sometimes I'll leave my, my tails in case, you know, I want to adjust anything. But I think it's um, a neater way of working if you trim and you tuck them in as you go. And then I'm going to add some onto this one. I do feel like I might need to speed up a little bit. You don't mind if we go slightly over, do you? I want to show you how to do the swing. Which is just a little added detail, which I think looks very nice. I mean, if you wanted to, if you had, I don't know, some little charms, uh, maybe like a moon bead or a, a star. In fact, the stars that we used, um, Totally Beads had lovely little, I think they were hematite stars that we used when we were doing the um, Christmas tree rings. One of those would look really cute on this. Okay, again, if you want to, you can twist these wires together. You can make that as an extra branch or you could separate them so you've got individual stems coming off your branches. And you can choose if you need be so you could say, right, well, I need a tiny little bit more, another gem chip. There's the hole in that one. It's going to have one. I just can't see it. 
Um, so you might just want to pick up a, a smaller or a larger chip just to fill that space. But I love the shape of them. Isn't that really lovely and leaf shaped, that one? So the tree of life um, represents a lot of things in, in many different cultures. It can often represent new beginnings, um, family journeys. So they're very nice gifts. I don't know, maybe you know someone who's just had a baby or going through, I don't know, maybe a little bit of change in their life. This might be a nice gift for them. So again, I'm cutting that little tail fairly close, making sure that when I tuck it in, I'm tucking it in on the inside nice and snug and one more on this branch oh elaine i like that idea yeah she says an owl or a bird charm and carol says you have our undivided attention natalie no matter how long it takes oh fantastic i keep you here all day then <laughs> so i'm just adding these chips on just I really like doing them as I say I think this is probably one of the first the first wire makes I ever made were Christmas tree decorations and I was making like little wire cats and things like that for the tree um then I did some tree alives and I did some multicolored kind of stones so like rainbow colors and chakra colors um I think the first one I did was probably a soda light one. And, you know, I'm looking at it, I think I'm, I'm happy with the tree. I'm happy with the, the shape of it. But as I say, I made I made the frame for that one. Um, and it, it needed a bit of work and a bit of practice. All right, what to do with these branches? I think I will keep them in that position i'm going to give this another little twist because i quite like the fact that those branches twist around each other and then i'm going to open them out again just going to uncross the wires and say wire has um a mind of its own it wants to do certain things and i always think work with the wire not against it so if it wants to go in a certain direction something like this just just go with it All right and i'm going to open them up a little bit i'm going to add some more chips onto there nina says i want to get the silver and the gold kit well considering nina you're getting five in each one you're going to be able to make an abundance of them so do it treat yourself you can never have enough chips and enough wire. If you've got any left over, there'll always be something you can do with them. Look at the colour of that purpley chip. Isn't that pretty? I do like fluorite. It's also apparently the properties of fluorite. It's meant to be very good for um, memory and concentration. So if you've got anyone studying for anything, any students in your family, fluorite is meant to be a good one. Giving that a little trim, tucking it in. I might, I'm not even in shot there. So all you can, you can see I'm just hooking that in and you can't really see I can probably give these a little tuck down afterwards just to flatten them out more around that frame. But you won't be able to really see where those branches have joined. Thank you, Ruth. She says, please press your DNA 
on the like button with your finger. You can press like, you can press love. No angry faces though, eh? <laughs> Can't be angry when we're looking at gemstones and pretty things. Gosh, the wind's picking up. I don't want to go out in this today, it's awful. I do think a lot of my Christmas shopping will be done online this year. Um, I do like going around the shops. It makes me feel festive. But it's having the time and the urge to go out. If I know what I'm getting, I say I've been trying to buy a lot of things from uh, small businesses this year. So I, I know a few people We've got online businesses and um, if I know what I need to get, then I've just been contacting them. i tell you what I did get, which was quite unexpected and very lovely. Um, I have a friend, she's very talented. She's a hairdresser. She always looks immaculate, um, but she's also very crafty. And she makes the most beautiful door wreaths and like table centerpieces. So she made me one. And I was thinking, should I buy another one? I've got one, but should I buy another one? And she surprised me with one. And it's stunning. I'll pop, um, pop a little picture up on the page so if anyone wants to have a look at it you can um but she's so talented and she's put little crystals in it as well they're just like little um artificial ones but they're beautiful so i'm very happy with my door wreath and i've actually got most of my decorations up now so my large christmas tree the real one which is in this room um that is now fully decorated and my son helped me pop the star on it yesterday. And then we decorated the artificial one, which is in what we call the living room. So the back room where my TV is. Um, and it's lovely. We've got multicolored lights on that one. So it's, it's a little bit more nostalgic for me of like Christmases when I was a kid. I'll tell you what I haven't done on this, which I was going to do to show you tend to I'll, I'll use one of these branches and i'll show you how to do this just chit chat now about the christmas aren't i um, i'll leave this one out and we'll see what that looks like so i'm going to give these a twist i'm going to carry on splaying out my my tree branches i'm going to take them up and kind of lay them where I would like them to be positioned. Sometimes you might think, you know, I'm going to need a little bit more space on there. You also, you don't have to put gemstones on them all. You might feel like you want a bare branch. And if, if that's the case, just leave your gemstones off and wrap it and finish it like you usually would. So bring in that round maybe three times i'm going to neaten them up and flatten them out at the end i'm just i'm just reading some comments i'm gonna to have to scroll back up and see what i've missed and um, angela says it's cold in scotland uh, not much wind and Camille went shopping yesterday. It was horrid, so gusty, and the shops were quite empty. I mean, that's the one good thing, isn't it? You don't have to um, worry about people when it's when no one wants to go out. Again, can just twist those branches with my pliers if I want to. And one of the things that you can do, which I am going to show you, but it'll probably look quite odd because I've only put one in is I like to curl some of my wire and make little curly bits. Where's one to show you? 
So on this one, all I've done there is I've just taken maybe one that should have been a little branch and just with my round nose pliers, just give it, I cut it so maybe about an inch. Can that focus? And then I've just curled it with my pliers. And I just, I think that just adds an, an extra little level of detail. But again, it's preference. Some might like it, some might not. I'm gonna add an extra one onto this one. I just wanna make sure that my chips come right up to the frame. We're not doing too bad for time there. I say it could be a little bit neater because I am rushing a little bit now. But as I say, I do find it helps to trim as I go and then I haven't got all those ends sticking out the top. I'm just going to flatten them down a little bit. And you can move your branches over as well so you can make them more 3D if you like. So rather than them all coming out, they can go over the others as well, if you like. I'll probably move one of these up here. Can't find the hole, so I'll just move on to another one. It's in there somewhere. Uh, those colour stones are lovely on the tree you're doing. What did you say it was called? These ones are fluorite. So have a little look if there is a particular stone you like, what colourway that's with. Um, so if you, you know you want a particular stone, don't worry about the frame. Or you could always buy your frame and your kit and add in some extra gemstones. I mean, you could use this with, you could do this with beads if you wanted to. Um, I think these gemstones and the ones in your kit of this size, because you can get different size chips as well, are perfect because they're small enough to look delicate against that 0.3 millimeter wire. Um, and I think, you know, when you're using chips, you've got that organic look um, and you're making a tree. So it's, it's giving it that natural effect. I mean, you might have a tree. I've got a tree that's not tucked in, is it? I've got a tree in my garden, a big sycamore. Um, I could attempt to replicate that. So I could look at the shape of the trunk and the branches and the particular colours um, that are on that tree. So I've only got one more branch to do. So I'm going to tuck this one in. As I say, I'm bringing that wire over and cutting it. So hopefully when I can tuck it in, I'm tucking it in on the underneath of my frame. Yeah, I think I only need one on that bit. I 
I will scroll back up in a minute and have a little look at any comments or questions that I may have missed. Okay. So as you can see, I'm cutting quite a lot off there. So I didn't need to have all that length when I started. Um, but I would much rather have that little bit extra than that little bit less. So you can go in with your pliers, you can give the little roots a twist, you can twist your branches if you need to. You can go around the edges with your pliers and just tuck in or flatten any of those branch kind of joinings that you've done. If you want to make it into a pendant, then you can take a jump ring and you can open it up and find a little part that you think is fairly central just between your branches and close that up again. Close it up properly. There you go. And if you want to add a swing, what I tend to do, let's see if I can use some of the wire I've used and cut off. I probably can. So I'm going to cut whatever length I need, or I'm going to use some of the pieces I've cut off. It doesn't have to be too long. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, well, it depends on the type of your swing. You might want... Um, you might want to do um, like a full little swing or sometimes you can have, um, you know, the one with just the seat on the middle and the rope that comes through, like a rope swing type thing. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a different colour chip because obviously you're getting five in your pack. So I'm going to go for a contrasting colour. So I'm using the soda light here and I'm going to take three and I'm going to run my wire through the middle of them and then I'm going to take another wire and because we're using the 0 0.3 you're going to get that wire through or two pieces of wire through no problem so all I've done is position my let's move this out the way for now see if this can focus positioned my three little chips through two pieces of wire and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist the wire together. So I'm opening them out from each other. So I'm making kind of a T shape. And I'm twisting those ends. And then the same on the other side, opening the wire out, twisting them. It doesn't matter which way you twist. Um, for me, I obviously twist one way better than the other, so this isn't going quite as neat as the other side. I'm rushing. Twisting them together, and then I'm going to give it a little bend. So I'm going to see how long do I need it to be. So I'm going to take my pliers, and I'm going to twist one side of that little twisted wire up vertically and again on the opposite side so I've made what's going to be a little swing and then because I made my tree going out this way I've got that little branch there in the middle I'm going to try and hang it off here so I've probably got too much there but what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim my wires so they're around the same length as each other. And then I'm going to position it on my tree where I want it. So I'm going to bring them up through this gap here. And I'm going to want it to be about that long. And then I'm going to move these ones out the way for a little bit. I'm just going to take these through and wrap them around. Now you can use your pliers if you need to get into these like little spaces. It can be a little bit fiddly. And I'm just gonna 
wrap that what I'm going to call the rope. So it's not, it's wire, but it's representing the rope of my swing. And I'm going to bring that round a couple of times and then do the same on the other one. So I'm going to position my chips down the bottom, which is representing the seat of my swing. And I'm bringing my rope through the branches of the trees, working with those two together. And as I say, use your tools if it's easier just to bring them through. And then all I'm going to do is trim off, making sure I'm not trimming any of my branches. I'm just trimming that part of the swing. I'm going to trim them off with my pliers, or my cutters rather, and with my pliers, I'm just going to tuck them back in and bring them towards the front. So they're not going to, if you're wearing this as a pendant, it's not going to be scratching from the back. I'm trying to do this under the camera where you can see. And then I can just manipulate this shape a little bit more if I need to. And there you have a little swing on your tree. All right, let me have a look at the comments and what I may have missed. I'm going to hold that there and you can have a little look at it while I see what I've missed. Um, Debbie says, can you do the tree first, then go back and wire the ring so it sits flush? Yes, you absolutely can. What you can do, Debbie, is you can cut your lengths, do your roots, wrap up to your branches, and then the long tail ends that you've got, you can work them down and you can fill in the gaps between your branches with the length of what's left on your, your branch, so to speak. So you can wrap them round and then if there's any gaps, so like this part, the root would probably have only finished around here um, and this last branch may have finished here. I can just work in that section then. Yeah, if that's the way you want to do it, Debbie, absolutely you can. Have I missed any other questions? Um, it's amazing how quickly it comes together while you are doing it. Thank you, Sheila. Um, look at that. Four minutes past 11 um, with little bits of chit chat in between. It is really quick to do um, and you'll be able to do it even quicker than this. I've obviously been... Um, talking you through it step by step so you'll be able to do that quicker um sue says she got out her decks down at the weekend um she has the cushions knitted bauble small tree oh it sounds lovely i've got more of my lights up than i've got my decorations i've still got bits and bobs to pop on my shelf um celia good luck with your booster jab hope it goes well for you my love um, Victoria says she had this kit last year and loved doing it. Have a little look, um, Victoria, on the website if you are tempted to do it again. These will have different colour chips with them this time. Um, we like to um, spice it up a little bit. Elaine says it's it's lovely, Natalie. Um, I don't like the tree too crowded with chips but I love this one. It's entirely up to you in terms, I'm showing you under the camera, I've taken it down now, haven't I? Um, it's entirely up to you how you want to design yours. It's your personal preference. I think some of them look gorgeous when they're, you know, a really full tree. But for me, that is, um, that's summer. So it would be really nice maybe to get different colored chips and to do seasonal ones. I think that'd be lovely. I like to be able to see the branches on mine. I like for you to be able to see the twists and things. Um, and this one's got really big roots. So they're all so different and it's entirely up to you how you'd like to make it. 
And Lucy says it's gorgeous. Thanks, Lucy. Charlotte likes it too. Thanks, Charlotte. Um, Joanne's loving the swing. It's just an added little detail, isn't it, to make it, again, a little bit more personal to you. Um, how is the plaited trunk done, says Victoria? You will start with your wires like I've done where you um, double them over and you can bring a few of those over together so then you can put them into groups of three and then just plait as you usually would. Um, right, I, th I think I've answered everything. If I haven't, please send me a message. If you've got any crafty queries, please send me a message. Um, if you are wanting to chat this time of year, it can be quite difficult for people. Send me a message. Always here. Always lovely to talk to you. Um, oh, Carol says, I did a picture of the Four Seasons as a present. That sounds gorgeous, Carol. Did you take a photo of it? Can you share it in the group? You know, that's what I'm going to ask. Whatever you say you've done, I want to see it. Um, Camille, have a lovely day. Um, Sandra says, it's very pretty and I like that you can see the branches too. Could you use a bugle bead for a seat? That would be a really good idea, Angela. Yeah, definitely. In fact, if you had the um, Christmas earrings that I just so happen to have here, if you bought this kit, you could use one of your bugle um, beads as the seat. You could even pop a star on there if you wanted to. Um, yeah, that'd be really good. I mean, I've just used the chips because obviously that's what's, what's in the kit. Um, but yeah, I actually like the idea of a bugle bead. Make it, Angela. Show me the picture. <laughs> right. I'm going to say um, thank you all so much for joining me. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. As I say, it's something a little bit different. You may have done it before, but it's just my take on it. Um, so I'm very grateful that you were with me today. I will be with you again on Friday if you haven't had enough of me this week. And we're going to be doing some lovely popcorn jewellery. Um but the beads we've included in these are very special. So thank you so much for joining me. Have a lovely, lovely week and I will see you on Friday. So lots of love and light to you all. Take care. Bye.